Allah is one. He is the only one who created everything. Allah is one. He is the only one who created everything. Can you see the moon? Can you see the sun? Can you see the shining stars? Allah made them all. Can you see the night? Can you see the day? Can you see the clouds high? Allah made them all. Allah is one. He is the only one who created everything. Can you see the birds flying up so high? Can you see them in the sky? Allah made them all. Allah can hear me. Allah can see me. Allah can hear me. Allah can see me. Wherever I am, Allah is with me. We must believe in faith. Allah's divine faith. Whether it's good or bad, we still believe it's faith. We still believe it's faith. Everything in the universe is controlled by Allah. Everything in the universe is following Allah's faith. Allah is one. He is the only one who created everything. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد النبي الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Welcome again to the stories of the prophets peace be upon them And we are still with the story, the great story, one of the most amazing stories in the Quran The story of Musa عليه السلام, Moses peace be upon him And we have described his story with Fir'aun, the king of Egypt And then we described his story with the people in uh, the children of Israel, his, his family, his tribe and then we saw how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished his people by wandering for 40 years in southern Palestine and Sinai as a punishment for them for not obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. During these 40 years, many stories happened, major stories happened. One of them is the story of the cow and we described it in the last episode. And then now we are talking about the story of Al-Khidr. Al-Khidr, a great man, many many scholars believe that he is a great prophet of Allah. He was not a messenger, but a prophet. Again, the difference between a messenger and a prophet, a messenger brings a message, which means he brings laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, while a prophet does not. Just tells pe his people about the greatness of Allah, how to behave, etc. But there's no message. There's, there's no new laws. So, uh, most of the, uh, of the prophets of Israel were not messengers they were prophets following the message of Musa السلام, or Abraham السلام. one day during the 40 years of wandering Musa السلام, asked his people ask me ask me anything whatever questions you have I will answer you So they started to ask. Musa السلام, for a minute, for a moment, felt that he is the most knowledgeable person on earth. And everyone was praising him, MashaAllah, you're great, you are a great messenger of Allah. And one of them, one of the children of Israel, asked Musa السلام, who is the most knowledgeable man on earth? And Musa said, I am the most knowledgeable man on earth. He answered according to his knowledge. But his knowledge is limited. That's what he knew. He did not know that there is another greater knowledgeable person on earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the angel to him and he said, Musa, you have answered without asking. Who told you that you are the most knowledgeable of earth, on earth? He said, is there someone else? And the angel said, yes. 
there is a more knowledgeable person on earth. Musa said, who is he? How can I find him? I want to learn from him. See, again, some of us, when they feel that uh, we're so great, and then we discover there is someone greater than us, we feel bad, we feel sad. But Musa, I mean, he answered according to his knowledge. Now he discovers that there is someone else. So he uses the opportunity, uh, the opportunity to seek knowledge instead of being sad about it. Who is that man who is more knowledgeable than I? And how do I find him? The angel said to him that Allah tells you, if you want to find him, go to the junction of the two seas. And there you will see a miracle. And with that miracle, you will find that person. What a strange way of finding a person that he looks for in the whole earth. And then the angel left. Where is this junction of the seas? And what kind of miracle should I wait for? So Musa alayhi salam insisting on seeking knowledge, on learning, he said, I will not give up until I reach the junction of the two seas or I shall spend the rest of my years, the rest of my life, I will spend the rest of my life in travel until I find that person. Musa alayhi salam said to Joshua, Joshua the son of Nun according to the, the hadith, a young man who was serving Musa alayhi salam, attending to the needs of Musa alayhi salam, and learning from him at the same time. The Quran does not mention his name, Joshua, Yosha in Arabic, but the Quran says, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِفَتَاهُ When Musa said to his young man, young man attending to his, serving him, attending to his needs, and learning from him. It's like a companion, a young companion that takes care of a great scholar. So he said to him, let us get ready for a journey. He asked the wise men, where is this junction of the seas? Said, we do not know, except if an, the, the only junction of the seas that we know that is close to us is, if you can picture with me, the Red Sea, and you see from the Red Sea, there comes two horns where they meet is a junction of one horn, another horn, and the Red Sea, the junction of the seas, or the junction of the two seas, the, the big horns of the Red Sea. And he said, yes, that is correct. It fits the description. So now he must leave his people, travel to southern Sinai, to the place of Aqaba, and there, next to that place, that's what where he should look for. Now, still, it's a big place. I mean, it's a big place where they join, but at least it's narrowed to that place. Joshua, the son of Nun, prepared for the travel, and the two men, the great men, Musa alayhi salam, the great messenger of Allah, and Joshua, who is agreed among the scholars, that became a, a prophet later on, the two messengers and prophets of Allah moved on to the junction of the seas. <laughs> and a very strange travel. Now, where, where should they stop? Where would they find that man? They do not know, except that they must wait for a sign, a miracle. So they travel. Days and days, weeks, they moved, traveled on foot. Musa alayhi salam said to Joshua when he asked him, where are we going? He said, I will walk until I find this knowledgeable person at the junction of the seas. Otherwise, prepare yourself for a 10 years journey. And Joshua was surprised. What is this? 
What should we wait for? I said, I don't know. What should we look for? I said, I don't know. How would we find him? He said, I do not know. But a miracle shall come. So Joshua, a young man, they said he was 15 at that time, moved with Musa, obeying. That is the character of a true believer, obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they moved to Al-Aqaba, at the junction of the seas, the two seas at the tip of the Red Sea. They reached the junction and Musa alayhi salam, he said, let us rest for a while. Musa slept. During his sleep, Joshua was still awake. He had caught a fish and put the fish with him in the luggage, prepared it with salt so that they will cook it later on. While he was waiting for Musa to wake up, something happened. This dead, dead fish started to move, became alive, jumped on land, and went back into the sea and started swimming left. What is this? It's a miracle happening. But Joshua did not know what it meant. And then Joshua slept. When they woke up, they started moving again. They walked and walked for a while. They became tired again, settled down. Musa alayhi salam turned to Joshua. He said, Joshua, please prepare our lunch. We became very hungry. And Joshua remembered. He said, oh my God, how could I have forgotten? I should have told you about the fish. He said, what, what's about the fish? And he told him about the fish that he caught and it became alive again and started to swim again. So that's what we're looking for, Joshua. Let's go back. And they started to go back, walking on their footsteps until they reached the place where the fish became alive and left into the sea. And there, at their place where they were setting, settling before, they found an old man sitting and waiting. See, if they had waited, if Joshua did not forget, they would, he would have come to them. The Quran gives us all of these details in the story of the cave. So Musa alayhi salam immediately recognized this is the man he's looking for. So he said to Joshua, Joshua, now you can leave. Joshua left and went back to the children of Israel. And Musa alayhi salam stayed with Al-Khidr. After greetings and talking for a while, Musa alayhi salam did not see any special thing about Al-Khidr. But he said, I must accompany him to see his knowledge. So when this man was ready to leave, he said, Musa said to him, please, would you allow me to walk with you, travel with you? The old man said, no. He said, why not? Please, I came all this way to see you, to be with you, to travel with you. He said, Musa, you cannot bear me. I'm too much for anyone. Nobody can bear me. He said, I will bear you. He said, how could you bear something that you have no knowledge of. I mean, we bear logic, but if it is illogical, how can, can we bear it? He said, I will do it. Just give me a chance. Al-Khidr said, I will allow you to travel with me, but on one condition. 
He said, Musa said, I'm ready for any condition. He said, I have only one condition for me, for you. And Musa said, yes. And he said, if you want to travel with me, you are not allowed to ask any questions. You may not ask questions. Whatever you see, you should be silent about until I explain it to you. Don't ask me about anything until I explain it to you first. Do you agree? Otherwise, you may not travel with me. He said, I absolutely agree. That is a simple condition. I will watch, no matter how strange things happen in front of my eyes, I would not do anything about it until you explain it to me. I said, we have an agreement. So they walked. They started on this strangest journey ever. They reached the sea and there were a port and poor men had ships and on these ships they would travel from, they would take people from one place to another. So they asked the people of the ship, would you allow us, we have no money, to travel with you? They said, yes, we're leaving anyway and you will not hurt us, so you travel with us. So Musa alayhi salam and Al-Khidr alayhi salam rode on this sh very old ship and these, with them they're very poor salesmen but it was a ship that can move in the area anyway. So they moved. In the middle of the sea. Before that small incident happened, a small bird, before they moved, came, sat on the edge of the uh, ship, and then took, just put its beak into the water and came out. Musa alayhi salam was asked by Al-Khidr. He said, have you seen how much this bird have taken out of the sea? How much water did this bird take out of the sea? <laughs> nothing. So less than a drop. That is nothing. Al-Khidr said to Musa, oh Moses, your knowledge and mine and the knowledge of all the people on earth is like this drop compared to the knowledge of Allah. Allah is most knowledgeable. So they started on the journey. In the middle of the sea, Al-Khidr did something very strange. He took an axe and made a hole in the sea, uh, in the ship, and the water from the sea started to seep into the ship and then moved away as if he did nothing. Musa salam, was so surprised, said, what have you done? Why did you break the ship? Do you want us to get into the sea and drown? Is this what you do to the people who helped you and gave you a trip free of charge? And the people ran and tried to fix the ship and the ship halted in its place and they had a lot of trouble pouring the water out and uh, anyone who'd see them from far away would immediately know that this ship has a has trouble and is drowning and ships passed by looking at the ordeal of this ship no, nobody stopped for them and they had so much trouble saving the ship so Musa was angry. He said, what did you do? Why did you do this? Al-Khidr turned to him and said, Musa, remember our agreement? You will not ask about anything until I explain it to you first, what happened to my condition. He said, oh my God, I forgot. I am sorry. I totally forgot. Please forgive me. <laughs> that was something unbearable not to ask about. He said, I will forgive you. So, 
they came out from the ship still al khidr did not explain why he was destroying the ship making it almost drowning musa kept quiet he has to still that does not know why did he do it they moved and to the next part of the story which is even stranger than the first part the first part was destroying a ship how did this strange story continue and how did it end and then what happened to the children of israel who were wandering for 40 years all of this is part of our great stories of the prophets amazing stories all detailed in the quran please read the quran but now read it while you know the story so it will become clearer to you next time we will continue with the story of al khidr and musa alayhi salam and then we will go back to the children of israel and what happened to them may allah have peace upon you assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah see you next time inshallah